So your significant other wants to come to your next gig and he or she may even want to attend the rehearsal for that gig. Will you get looked at crazy if you bring them? Should you bring them? Is it okay? Let's talk about it. Hey, and welcome to Music Space, where we help working musicians just like you learn how to quickly and easily make a living with your craft. So if you're new here to the channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when new videos are uploaded. Okay, so first thing off top, this is a very touchy subject for a lot of musicians. Some think that you should never bring a significant other to a gig and it's disrespectful and others think it's not a big deal, it's okay. And I also wanna be clear here off top with the type of bands and musicians that we're talking about as it concerns this, because with professional bands, this is not a thing at all. You simply do not bring a significant other because in a professional band, your work there is like a day job. It's the same thing. And you wouldn't bring your significant other to your job if you had a day job. So we're talking specifically about the sort of average bands that play, you know, nightclubs, bars and things like that. But be that as it may, I'm going to be as fair and impartial as I possibly can and provide some insight on this subject. Because this is one of these things that can possibly hinder you from getting more gigs and getting more calls and of course making more money as a musician or a band. Because again, you hear me always say it, that is what this channel is about. It's about helping musicians make more money. So the purpose here is to help you understand how the whole significant other thing is in the music industry and how it may affect you getting calls for more gigs and thus making more money. So if we're honest about it, a lot of the problems that arise in this whole significant other and bringing them to you know gigs and rehearsals arise from problems that are in the relationship itself. If you have a jealous or a clingy significant other, despite the reasons why they may be jealous or clingy, all of those types of things can affect you trying to work and they can get in the way while you're in a rehearsal or while you're at a gig because you're having to tend to them. Whereas your focus really needs to be on what the band is doing in the rehearsal and what the band is doing on the show or gig. And it's sort of an expectation that you be engaged in those things when you're doing them. But again, if you have that significant other that wants that same type of attention, they're expecting you to be engaged with them sort of in the same ways. So definitely potential problems can arise from things like that. And sometimes other problems arise when significant others sort of overstep their boundaries with things. They do things like offer unsolicited advice and help. We've all seen or heard of situations where a band has been in a rehearsal or something like that and they've been trying to go through the bridge of the song and figure out how to transition happens and things like that and then all of a sudden the significant other yells over well why don't you guys just you know break it down and like let the drummer play and everybody's looking like and a lot of times what the significant other is trying to do and of course it's not all cases and they may not even realize but what they're trying to do is shoehorn their way into this already established relationship that musicians have and the relationship that you may already have with your bandmates and it makes everyone feel awkward. But to be fair, there are a lot of situations where the significant other is just as welcome as the band personnel or the band person who brought them. We've all seen, experienced, or heard of this as well, where the significant other is really a great help to the band. They bring the band water while they're on stage playing if they're there at the gig. At the end of the night, they help wrap cables and some of them even help carry out equipment. I even know of some wives groups of husbands, like musicians' wives, where they formed groups to help out their husbands when they're traveling and when they do gigs and things like that. They specifically have groups formed to help their significant others or their husbands or whatever during their performance times. Now, I'll be honest with you about this. Generally speaking, most of the musicians and most of the experiences that I've experienced in talking about this with musicians kind of fall a little bit further to that left side of it where they think it's sort of inappropriate to have your musician, your significant other as a musician at your rehearsals and gigs. There's really just sort of this negative stereotype about it. So for the rest of this video, I'm gonna offer you some recommendations to help you decide whether or not it's okay to have your significant other at these respective places. 
But before we get into that, if you're getting value out of this video so far, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video. Go ahead and do that now. That lets me know that you appreciate this content and it lets me know what type of content to make for you in the future. Okay, so the first thing is you should never just assume that it's okay to bring your significant other to gigs and rehearsals. It's always a good idea to check with the people that you're playing with or that you're playing for and ask them if it's okay to have a significant other at the rehearsal or the gig. And of course, assuming this is you're playing with some new players or players that you may not be as familiar with. And if it's the case where it's your normal band, you guys probably should have these sort of rules established already and have that conversation about bringing significant others. Also, if it's the case where your significant other has to be with you because of some sort of circumstance, well, it may be the case that they may have to just sit in the car for a while, or they may have to drop you off and leave and come back and pick you up. Now, of course, I'm not telling you to leave your significant other in the car necessarily. What I am saying is that this is why it's important to check with the people that you're playing with first so that they understand and know and they can give you the okay if something like that is okay for them. But another thing you should be doing from a personal standpoint is assessing the nature of your relationship. Is it the type of relationship where you want your significant other at things like that, at your gigs and shows, and you wanna share that type of stuff with them? Some people just don't have that type of relationship and that's okay, but that's why assessing it is important so that you can eliminate these problems. So if you do want them to be a part of these things, check with them and ask them, you know, ask your significant other, are they okay with it? That way you don't sort of run into a lot of these problems that happen because of personal things in relationships. Now, all of this is important because you can potentially get a really bad image when you start bringing your significant others to band rehearsals and band gigs because of the things that I mentioned, because so many musicians sort of fall to this sort of side of it where they think it's disrespectful or improper or not okay to do so. And this is especially true if you're spending a lot of time catering to your significant other while they're there at the rehearsal or at the gig. Like on band breaks, you're in the booth in the back in the corner in the dark, just caking. And you know, the other band members are talking to each other, talking about the music, exchanging numbers saying, hey man, are you available for this? And then you're nowhere to be found because you're catering to your significant other. And things like this can cause a bad image and it will prevent other musicians from calling you and you know, you're being on their call list for other gigs and upcoming opportunities. It's just the way that it works. It's literally the case where people will be like, well, I would call them, but they're probably somewhere kicking with their girl or their dude. So the thing to get here is just be respectful of the people and the musicians and the bands that you play with. Just check with the people that you're playing with, check with the leader of the band or the person in charge or whatever, ask them if it's okay, let them know you're planning on bringing them or you want to know that it's okay. And this is important. Even if you get the okay, like they say, yeah, sure, it's okay. Make sure that while your significant other is there, make sure to you know have a conversation with your significant other and ask them to sort of stay out of the way, respectfully of course, but let them know that your focus needs to be on the music with the band and what you're doing in the show or the rehearsal and that they don't interfere with that. But taking this approach to the whole significant other thing puts you in a position where other band members have more respect for you and guess what that translates into? you making more money. But the question is for you. What do you think about bringing significant others to gigs and rehearsals and shows and things like that? Do you bring your significant other to shows and gigs and think that it's okay for everybody to do it? Or do you fall on the other side and despise this and think that it's completely disrespectful to have significant others at shows and gigs? Or do you not even care about it one way or the other? Jump down in the comment section and let me know your thoughts. I definitely want to dialogue with you about that in the comments. And listen, thank you so much for watching this video. I really do hope that it was insightful on this significant other subject and that you have some knowledge to progress with respect to bringing significant others to gigs and things like that. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button on this video. And here are some other videos that you can check out right now.